Greetings and welcome back to our enthralling Discovering Warhammer reaction series. I'm Morend and today we're going to be continuing our auxiliary in exploration into the Warhammer universe. In this episode, we'll delve into the Sacred Order of the Sisters of Battle, the Heroic Grey Knights and the Towering Imperial Knights. Let's get into it. Here we go. Let's talk about the Sisters of Battle. A simp has fallen for an e-girl in Lego Ooh. City. The Sisters of Battle of the Adeptus Sororitas, if that's how I pronounce it correctly, is an all-female group of battle sisters going through the Ecclesiarchy section of the Imperium. The Ecclesiarchy is, of course, the oh, church. Oh, that building is this amazing. Is, what is that? Imagine a private army of the church. Oh. Which is scary. And it is. The sisters are an extremely zealous force, and they take this to a full extreme. They believe in three main things, faith, martyrdom, and fire. Through the Bolter, the Flamer, and the Melta, the Sisters of Battle are extremely potent at taking out chaos and heretics. Mainly heretics, because as they are a fighting section of the Ecclesiarchy Church, that's the big thing. Of the they Game want of Thrones music played Any right now. Any form of heretic will face the Emperor's justice through those three main weapons the Bolter, the Flamer, the seven. and the Melta, and they will do so with extreme prejudice. Literally. They are the closest things we have to nuns in space. And I'm talking hardcore nuns. They carry holy fire on their backs. They have holy, like, books and sigils all across like their armor. Their movie, main that, battle it? tank no, is a fucking space. pipe organ missile launcher. They have small babies that they have okay. like That's removed really their cool. brain capacity to make them little servant cherubs to fly around and give them ammunition and shit. They drop churches from low what orbit the fuck? as many drop pods onto battles. They drop churches into battles and they blare war hymns and holy music from their frigates in low atmosphere and shower holy water across the battlefield these are the people you are okay, dealing with these are and really they're cool. fucking awesome How like that? they Reminds can me of literally Valkyrie. stave off demons Ooh. on the tabletop yeah. Because their faith is that strong. That guy's gross. Remember the warp, the demons from the warp? Well, the warp also manifests in your mind. All of your emotions, negative and positive, go through the warp. It's the immaterium, the place of all things. So if you are that mentally fortified, that mentally mm. strong, you can stave off horrifying demons. And all these girls, oh, not a crack. Mm. Not a crack in that mental armor. Now, as much as a meme as they are, and as much as their models look a lot like Ongo, Ongo Gabloglian, yeah, which I can't unsee anymore. I gotta say, I love their design. I think they're extremely cool. They're another army that I'm currently collecting. They just released a whole new line of figures very Those recently, tanks are so and cool. they look wonderful. Everything from Celestine, the living, literally undying saint from the triumph of St. Catherine, which is literally a funeral procession as a model. Those organ tanks I mentioned earlier. This shit is the most over-the-top badassery in a lot of the Warhammer universe, and goddammit is it over-the-top, but Sisters of Battle are so cool. While I'm a guardsman at heart, oh, it's this definitely is over such the top. a cool faction. By Bolter Shell, Flamer Burst, and Melta Blast, the Mutant, the Heretic, and the Traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. So it has been for five millennia, so shall it be until the end of time. And speaking of Fuck burning yeah. demons. I can see! I can the, the Grey Knights. Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. The Grey Knights are a super secretive and These much more cool. old school look at power armored knights. Except they are all psychers. 
all of them have that crazy space magic magician shit. Hmm. For every 100,000 guardsmen, there's one Grey Knight. For every 10,000 Sisters of Battle, there's one Grey Knight. For every 1,000 Space Marines, there's one Grey Knight. Grey Knights are the strongest of the strong, both in mental will and absolute just strength. These are Space Marines that are all high-level psychers, all of them able to specifically do one goal, they and that is look kill amazing. demons. The Emperor These might believed be more that the style. demons of chaos were the number one threat to the Imperium, and he probably is right. However, this group is entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet, or I guess the moon, of Titan in the Soul System, the Grey Knights are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level That's psychers. A cool concept to me. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castellan Crow. He Holy has shit. a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama, and he has to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, uh -huh, constantly uh -huh. beckoning them. Use my power, use my strength, suck my penis, whatever the possibility. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently. Okay. And he has to stave it off forever, being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield, because anyone who gets too close to it might be tempted a little too hard. He is that pure of heart and mind, and all the characters in the Grey Knights are basically like that. The only issue is that um, the Grey Knights have a scorched earth policy, in you know, more ways than one. If they're fighting demons, demons corrupt and make people crazy. So if I'm a guardsman and I'm fighting demons, and the Grey Knights arrive, and they kill all the demons, I'm a risk. And so, guess who's not making it out of there? <laughs> On the tabletop, they're very strike fast, strike hard kind of people. They teleport all around the place. They are fast strike groups, small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. Okay, you only I really have like so these. Many characters, but nice. with it, you they get in there, you're very so tough, far. very tanky, you hit really hard, and you try to bounce around the battlefield quickly, but you don't have numbers, and so every dead Grey Knight hits really damn hard. They're fun, though, if you like that kind of uh, fast-striking kind of army. Oh, and also, uh, Kaldor Drago is a thing. We're not even going to get into Kaldor Drago. All right, that is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. I am the hammer. I am the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. They are as holy nope. as you can get for a Space Marine. If you like Space Marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier? Grey Knights. Now, if you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Oh, Lord, he coming. Do you like gigantic oh. walkers the size of homes or medium-sized buildings? Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them per turn? Do you want a gigantic old-school knight noble house style of walkers with giant chainsaw arms? Then you got Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them because they're just gigantic walkers, but they have this old school, like, house feel to them. Like, literally, like, they're houses. Each Imperial Knight comes from a it house. Gigantic, and each of them act in their own special way. These behemoth of walkers also destroy almost everything in their path, killing full swaths of squads in a couple shots, stepping on legions of troops. Like, these things do not mess around. And they look so cool. Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights, actually, for that matter, don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or Chaos God you currently believe in. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer, and if you want to collect them, go to town. They make for a great painting project, too. Game over back down to Earth. Let's talk something about a little bit, uh, a little bit different. If you're a rich, he means, right? Gold. Nope, I don't think we will in this episode, Bricky. Damn. Well, first we had Sisters of Battle, then the Grey Knights, 
than the Imperial Knights. Out of the three mentioned, probably Grey Knights are more my favourite in terms of what I'd probably um, collect and paint. Um, but boy, do the Sisters of Battle fucking just reek of like righteousness. Jesus. Nope, that's heresy. Just the 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 way they look, the way they act, the fact that they drop churches as drop pods, the fact that they have organ tanks that shoot rockets. They're just cool as shit. The Grey Knights, what I liked about them is they were more traditional they were more akin to sort of like a normal sort of knight than something more futuristic which might be why i sort of was drawn to them a little bit more but them in their own right being how fortitude they have how much fortitude they have being that they're like almost like single-minded in their goal and so so determined in their goal like like he was saying about the 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 demons if they were if there was a battle with demons going on and there was people of weaker mind there they would also see them as a threat just because they could be corrupted i guess is the right way to say that but boy I like I I don't know what it is. I th I th it's the armor. It's I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me to explain. But they just fucking they they look cool as shit. Even though they're only grey. I don't know how to put it. They'd they'd be pretty easy to paint, obviously, because they're pretty much one color. But um, the fact that um. They're so mentally astute that they can not only like fight demons and not be corrupted, but also like concentrate on other shit as well is quite quite cool. So yeah, uh, the Imperial Knights they they're just big max apparently, which is a pretty sure a question asked today for the first or second episode. Which if you haven't checked out, please do go check them out. Um, but. It didn't really say much about the size of them, which is disappointing because I quite wanted to know how how big they are. He just said that they're the big mix and didn't elaborate. So uh, if you know how big they are, then please do uh, let me know in the comments. And um, if you've got any other suggestions of videos I should watch uh, as part of the uh, Warhammer um universe then please do let me know in the comments i'm going to be going through the rest of this video uh the next part will be uh these three so adeptus custodies uh assassinarium and inquisition and then we'll be moving on to part two of the video uh so next episode is going to be a big boy it's going to be about 15 20 minute video um so yeah please like comment subscribe if you haven't already and let me know what you think in the comments and i will catch you all in the next one see ya